Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Transnet has initiated a process that could result in significant private participation at the ports of Durban and Kuch. Terence Grimmer joins me to discuss these developments and their potential significance. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. What exactly is Transnet considering at the two ports and why? Well, Transnet is testing the market at the moment for a partnership for, with uh, Transnet Port Terminals. That's the state-owned port terminal operator. It operates most of the terminals in South Africa at both uh, Pier 2 in Durban, the Durban Container Terminal, as well as at Mkuka Container Terminal. And really at Durban Pier 2, which is the largest uh, container terminal in Durban, they're really looking about at raising efficiency. We know that this uh, terminal has been underperforming for many years and was rated very lowly in a recent uh, World Bank rate, uh, rating, as was the uh, Kluge container terminal. But at Kluge, it's really about uh, trying to develop that into a transshipment hub, and it's about really raising volumes there. They need more volumes. It's not so much an operational constraint or an efficiency, efficiency problem. They're just not getting the containers that they need to become a true transshipment hub. So I think that's really what's, got, uh, what's going on at the moment. It's really about seeing if there's any appetite amongst international terminal operators or shipping uh, lines to partner at Durban and Kuka and to try and get the efficiencies up uh, to get those best practices in place at DCT and Pier 2 and then to raise the volumes at uh, the NCT. This also seems to fit in with a broader plan to modernize and upgrade the port of Durban in particular. Yes, as we've all seen over the last couple of months, the importance of the Durban Container Terminal and that corridor into Gauteng, the N3 corridor. And when that uh, logistics chain is broken, uh, the country is broken. So we need to get that operating efficiently. Obviously, there was, uh, there was the, uh, the riots as well as the cyber attack at the ports, which really highlighted uh, the, the sort of fragilities of that corridor and especially the port system. So there's a bigger plan really at, at, Trans, at Transnet. There's a master plan for Durban to really build a super container terminal there. That's, that's a really our most important container hub, uh, in, import and export hub for containers into South Africa and out of South Africa. But it's, it's at both its uh, efficiencies are low, as well as it's not modernized, it's not deep water enough. So there's a, there's a master plan that's been developed now. We know in a few years back, that master plan involved a, a dig out port at the old Durban International Airport site. That's been put on the back burner in favor of a reconfiguration uh, of the, um, the whole port of Durban system, where it will have an automotive hub, this big super container terminal, and the, uh, the, the petrochemical complex will be relocated to uh, Richards Bay. So it's a massive reorganization. And some of it relates to TPT, you know, the Pier 2, uh, there will be a new terminal at point um, for containers. But a lot of it is going to be a revolve around uh, the, the landlord, the Transnet National Ports Authority, and it's putting in the infrastructure that's needed to allow for these larger vessels. So it needs, it's about channel widening and deepening. Uh, it's, it's, about, it's going to be about dredging. It's going to be about reconfiguration of a Durban DCT has a, a, a Z shape that's very inefficient or very difficult to operate around, getting rid of that Z shape. So there's a number of elements and that could involve investment of around 100 billion rand up until uh, 2032, which is when this port should be our super container terminal under the master plan anyway. Uh, so that's really how this initial RFIs that have been out for the, the two terminals in Kuka and Pier 2 fit into a much broader vision and a much bigger vision for Durban in particular. How does this align with the reform to separate the Transnet National Ports Authority into an independent subsidiary? Yes, you know, this lack of vert vertical separation of uh, uh, Transnet's port businesses. So we've got the National Ports Authority, the landlord, and then you've got the operator, the TPT, uh, the uh, Transnet Port Terminals. They, you know, they have been separated, but they haven't been fully independent. 
and then and uh, TNPA needs to be fully independent, and that's what we saw the president announce. Is, is already an interim board, but they need, they're going to be an independent subsidiary of Fastnet that allows for a competitive port operation system. So they'll be the landlord and the infrastructure development uh, uh, element or component, and possibly in partnership with others, uh, we'll see. But definitely we need a, a competitive pressures uh, on the marine side. Of, uh, so the operating of the terminals, so it can't just be TPT anymore. We need a more competitive arrangement to get efficiencies up, to bring in innovation, to bring in private capital. So that vertical separation is crucial to level the play, playing field between TPT and other port operators or terminal operators. What is the prospect for further private participation at other ports, as well as in other Transnet units? Yeah, I think uh, Transnet's balance sheet, as with all state-owned companies, is stressed at the moment. I don't think it's this de-stressed. I mean, they have been hit badly by COVID and by the uh, inefficiencies that have arisen. But I think that they're still one of our stronger in terms of financially sound state-owned companies. But it is uh, under stress, strain. So it's going to be interesting to see how TPT approaches this Durban modernization, very big projects that are involved there to reorganize that uh, to deepen and widen channels, to reorganize the container terminal, to expand the automotive um, uh, terminal. I think there we're going to also see pri pri private sector participation in some form coming in. Definitely uh, in other ports at the terminal operator level, we really need not just the finance of uh, uh, international terminal operation and shipping lines, we really need the ingenuity, their skills, their best practices because we've really fallen behind and we risk losing our gateway status at the moment because of these inefficiencies. Then inland, you know, the inland ports, I think, are also stressed and not very efficient. There's a lot of potential to develop private sector uh, inland ports as well, or at least private sector partnerships. But I think pure private sector ports could also be good uh, inland ports to really uh, raise the competitive pressures in the system, which I think are lacking at the moment. So there's that opportunity. Then obviously around other units within Transnet, the rail the pipelines. I think there's an opportunity now to start once we have these first private sector participation processes embedded and we have a clear bidding processes for those and we know they're not corrupt and they're not a, a price gouging uh, or anti-competitive, I think there is opportunity in the other divisions of Transnet to also look at private sector participation, bringing private sector in. Uh, I know on the uh, definitely on the rail side, branch lines are an opportunity, but I think even main corridors are an opportunity for greater private sector participation. On the petroleum side, we're going to see uh, there could be interesting developments uh, um, in terms of. Uh, LNG importation, there's a really competitive pressures coming in from Toto and Putu. Can Richards Bay compete with those pressures? Is Kuka really an appropriate port to house that? It seems to be very far from potential gas offtaking. But there is that uh, there is that potential. But then there's obviously the energy transition and whether we should be investing massively in gas infrastructure anyway. But there's all those discussions, and I think that Transnet really does need and some of these, those new sectors, especially the gas uh, private sector expertise. So I think, yes, I think we're going to be seeing this at the start of something uh, that's going to be rolled out, not just at uh, Transnet port terminals, but at TNPA, Transnet freight rail, and potentially the petroleum, uh, the pipeline business. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.